Hey guys, welcome to Jason Whiskey Wires. Myself, Jason, bringing you whiskey review number 58, which is going to be a review on the Highland Park 30 year old. Now, I've got myself a little miniature of the Highland Park 30, which I actually picked up in this set sitting to my right. Now, if you have been following all the videos, you'll see that I reviewed the 12, the 15, the 18, the 25, and finally, we're going to conclude on the 30 year old. Now I'd also like to say a massive thank you to all my subscribers as we are at 200 subscribers and now we're looking to move into the next milestone of 250 and I want to thank all of you guys for your subscriptions and uh, lots more whiskies on its way to be reviewed. Also some travel around the world and distillery tours and then also featuring some brand ambassadors and people that work in the industry. So. I'll quickly start off the review by pouring myself a little dram off the Highland Park 30 year old and leave a little bit left over there. So we'll begin uh, starting with the age of this whiskey and the age of this whiskey is a 30 year old whiskey. I can say that because it is older than myself. Uh, in terms of the ABV, um, it is bottled at 45.7% ABV. There's two versions, and the version I'm actually, that's the newer version I just mentioned. The one I'm actually reviewing in this one is bottled at 48.1% ABV. So there's two editions. This was the older edition, and the newer edition is now bottled at 45.7. So two editions on the market. The cost selection they do use in this one are refill sherry costs only. They don't use first fill, and I believe uh, Highland Park mentioned on the website when I read it, it was because they don't use first fill because if you leave a first fill whiskey for 30 years, it's going to become very heavy and oaky. So it'll almost be too you know, strong on the palate, which I can understand because it can uh, destroy the quality of the whiskey completely. Now, in terms of the company that um, the company itself, the distillery is the Highland Park Distillery, which you can see over there. They are owned by the parent company, the Edrington Group, and they are based on the islands of Scotland, which you can see just over here. Now, it's the island is known as the Orkney Island, and it has two distilleries on it, one being Scapa and the second being Highland Park. Now, if you're also wondering about my whiskey reviews, I'll be reviewing the Highland Park Travel Retail coming up next. Uh, also, some of the limited editions like the Fire Ice, and uh, we're also looking at some of the discontinues like the Dark Origins and the 21-year-old. And I've also got, I think, the Hobbitster on its way to me and the Rebus. So, lots of different whiskies and some special single casks, which I'm looking forward to reviewing. So, in terms of the price point of view, which is this bottle over here, I'll ping it just over there for you. It is £600 for the full size bottle, which is rather steep for a 30 year old whiskey. But I have seen some other whiskeys crazy prices recently, so not too many. I'm not going to mention them just now. But anyway, in terms of exclusivity, no, it is not exclusive, but there is two different versions on the market an older and a newer one. Um, this one being the older one. Now, in terms of caramel coloring, Highland Park do not add any caramel color. So what you see is what you get. This is all natural color. It's got a very nice, dark, rich color to it. And it looks like a nice coppery color as well. So we'll begin by assessing the color for this whiskey and we'll start off, as you can see there, I'll hold it up for the screen so you guys can check this out at home. Now, if you guys would like to join me dramming with whiskeys or have recommendations for upcoming reviews, leave it down below in the comment section and uh, let me know and we can dram together in an upcoming review. Let me know your th thoughts on certain whiskeys. And if you've tried the Highland, or the Highland Park 30, let me know your opinion as well and your tasting notes in the comments section. So in terms of color, I'm gonna go with a coppery amber as it does have that slightly reddish sort of coppery note, but it does have that sort of ambery color, very nice, rich, deep amber. So copper amber is my color opinion. So next we'll move into assessing the nose of the whiskey. So into the nose. So to begin the assessment on the nose of this whiskey, it does have the ABV, it's much more powerful. Even though it's the same as the 25 I just recently reviewed, much more pungent on the nose, but you've got to leave it for a little time to breathe and then you'll get all those characters playing themselves through. Now it does begin with powerful spices as I sort of mentioned. It sort of reminded me of cinnamon, nutmeg, and sort of peppery note as well on the nose, very sort of pungent but slightly sort of nutty character as well and nutmeg. Then I'm getting sort of what reminds me of a sort of sweeter salted fudge. 
sort of like a dessert, but very sort of distinctive character as well in there. And then I'm also picking out that sort of slight peated note. Now it's a light peaty note, but it's uh, more towards, I'd say, a, I'd say toasted, maybe not toasted, a charred cedar wood. So if you've got a plank of cedar wood and you just put it on fire for a little bit and blow it out, that sort of toasted note, sort of charred, over charred actually. Cedar wood note, and don't ask me why cedar wood. I've been doing some DIY recently, and that's the word I've been using in terms of doing some work. So getting a little bit of that as well. Notes of vanilla, just ever so subtle, and then you're getting more of those fruitier characters which are there on the end of the note. It reminds me of ripe peaches, and these are almost overripe, but not, you know, brand new. These are very almost overripe peaches on their way out, sort of supposed to speak. Then I'm picking out sort of slight uh, roasted pineapple. This is not pineapple pieces, this is not pineapple slices, this is not even chunks of pineapple. This is generally, you took the pineapple and stick it on a barbecue. You're getting that sort of very nice or sort of roasted pineapple notes in this one. And then you're getting a citrusy note right behind that and it reminds me of candied peel because it's got a slight sweeter note, clementines. So you take the peel of that and you just sort of sugarcoat it, you get that sort of sweet candied peel of that afterwards. And don't ask me why, but I'm getting what reminds me of uh, cola sweets. You know those cola sweets you get in packets and literally, I'm getting that, that sort of comes to mind on the nose. Really interesting, the longer you leave this whiskey, it just keeps going and developing and that's something that really just hits home because I used to eat a lot of those and recently I've not touched them for like a few weeks so staying away from all sugary things. But then a slight sort of fruity character and that reminds me of uh, sun soaked sultanas right on the end. Very lovely nose in this whiskey. It does take a little time because of the ABV as I mentioned but as it does open up a lot more of those flavours really bring themselves to the nose. So next move into the palate for this whiskey. So to begin things on the palate for this whiskey it almost starts Completely different from the 25. The 25 was punchy, it was in your face. This one starts with the spices, much more mellow, rounded out. Starts off with the gingery warmth, really sort of settling on the sides and the back sides of the palate. Edges more into the middle of the palate, you're picking out a slight nutmeg, grated nutmeg note. And then after that, a sort of soury spice, which is really interesting to think about it. And as it sort of mellows out ever so softly, you're picking up a sort of honey blossom, sort of floral, sweeter character. Very interesting. I want to have a second sip because there's so many flavors going on this one. It is very complex. So second sip. So from the second sip, wow. This whiskey has changed a bit. From the first sip, you're getting those spicier notes. The second sip, you're getting a lot more fruitier notes. It sort of reminds me of cacao or dark chocolate, very rich, mouth coating, waxy almost in the way in which it coats the palate. Reminds me of plums, but plum skins as well, sort of stewed fruits, but not so heavily stewed, just fresh fruits almost. With the skins, the tannins notes, blood orange peel with a little citrusy zing to it. And a sweeter note comes through afterwards. A little bit of toffee. Very interesting. I'm gonna have a third sip actually because this is quite complex. Mm. There we are. Continuing from where we left off on the third sip, as it really starts to mellow out, the whiskey's had some time. I've had a few tastes. The palate's got used to it. I've got a little bit of nutty presence of walnuts, and then the sweeter presence of dried fruits is back. And this is more like a freshly packet of raisins. You just open it up, taking bites out of those. Very nice, chewy sweetness. And there's no ABV bite at all on the palate. Really, really enjoyable. So next we'll move into the finish and we'll conclude the Highland Park 30. So into the finish. So on the finish for this whiskey, it does have a medium long finish to it. Not overly complex on the finish, more towards the citrusy characters of lemon and lime juice combined together. A little bit of soft spices as they fade through, you're getting those sort of oakier notes taking over, making themselves present, giving you the distinctive character behind this one's age and those tannins ending with a slight sweetness to it. 
Really, really nice whiskey on the finish of this one. I'm gonna put that just to the side over there. I'm gonna give my rating, and this is one I haven't been able to really decide upon. Um, but um, it does deserve. I'm gonna go with this. So I've actually been in two minds about the 30 because I have tasted just after tasting the 25. Um, but the rating I'm gonna go with on this one is going to be a 95 out of 100. The reason behind that, I feel this whiskey is fantastic quality. Initially, um, the nose can be quite strong because the ABV really is powerful in this one um, compared to the 25, but it's complete contrast in terms of the palate of this whiskey. The ABV, you don't even feel it, whereas on the 25, you're punched in the face almost with those fruity characters, the spicy notes. This one is more or less the nose. And as you let the whiskey breathe, open out, you get to realize it's much more softer and the fruity characters come in. And then it imparts a little bit of the oaky characters, the tannins, the sort of plums. So, complete difference in the two. But personally, my personal favorite so far was the 25. And the reason behind that as well is because I have to take into consideration price. And 600 pounds, I feel, is very high in price, especially for myself. Uh, many people, unless you have a lot of disposable income, you don't have bills, or I don't know how your lifestyle would be, um, but if you've got extra disposable income that you can afford to spend on a whiskey, uh, by all means, this would be a fantastic buy for you. For myself, I can't buy that on a regular basis, so it couldn't be uh, a regular drinking whiskey, but I do think it's phenomenal whiskey. Uh, in terms of price point also being at 600, a justification on Highland Park's probably point of view would be that they can't churn this stuff out as quickly as possible because it has to age for 30 years. And if they put it at other 30 year olds, like, um, I'm not gonna mention the brands, but that 300, 400 pounds, um, they probably wouldn't be able to keep up with demand in the market. It would probably they'd run out of stock and then be waiting for a few years to produce the stuff. So I can see why it's at 600 pounds. Keep it a bit more higher and therefore less people have it, but at the same time, it's still there in the market. So I can see why it's priced up much higher. So on that note, I personally prefer, if I had to choose between the 25 and the 30, if I had the money, I'd personally go with two bottles of the 25 purely because I like that punchy, richer, spicier note on the whiskey. Um, but if you want a bit more subtle, sort of oaky presence in the same time, that's a little bit of fruity notes, uh, 30 is a superb whiskey, and that's why I've given it 95 out of 100. But on that note, I'm gonna wrap the video over here. If you have enjoyed the view, uh, if you have enjoyed the video, sorry, by all means, feel free to drop it a like. Uh, be sure to subscribe over here where you'll see all my latest videos and upcoming videos, and be also sure to hit the notification button so you know exactly when stuff is released. Also, be sure to check out the videos over here, which I should leave also. I think it'll be the 15, the 18, and the 25 just over there. And looking forward to doing some travel retail Highland Park very soon. But on that note, this has been Jason Whiskey Wise, and I'll catch you all for the next video.